I have this really great experience that's already working. I've honed it in, but I feel like I have to make this like community component of it. So I'm just going to throw that on top without being really thoughtful of it. Um, or I'm just going to try and blast out an email to a list of 100,000 people say, hey, come join my community and not have a thoughtful approach to it. For bad community experiences, there's big burnout. Welcome to the Web Design Business Podcast with your host, Josh Hall, helping you build a web design business that gives you freedom and a lifestyle you love. Hey, friends, good to be here with you for another episode of the Web Design Business Podcast. In this one, we are taking a deep dive into the world of online communities and memberships. And I am so excited to have back onto the podcast one of the co founders of Circle which is the platform that powers my online community, Web Designer Pro. Andy Guttersman is back on the show. And what we're going to dive into in this one is really where things are in 2024 with online communities and what's working with membership sites and course sites and gated content and where things are headed because there's been a lot of changes over the past few years, particularly with, with the rise of online communities and a lot of people getting out and off of different social media platforms and trying to kind of have one home for a community and membership sites, you know, it's kind of interesting. I feel like membership sites are a type of community, but those could be different too, if it's just gated content. So there's a lot of different tools out there and the market itself in the way of online communities has changed a lot. So we're really taking a deep dive into what's working. I can't think of anyone else more qualified than Andy because as a co-founder of Circle, they just recently passed 10,000 customers and they take a deep dive and a real good look at what's working with highly engaged online memberships and online communities. So he has a, a finger on the pulse of what's working. And that's exactly what you're going to find out here in this episode. So I'm pumped to share it with you. Again, I'm such a huge fan of Circle. I'm in it every day. I'm such a fanboy of this tool. They were a, a recent sponsor for my newsletter. Uh, I'm actually this week at the time of releasing this video, I'm going to be kicking out a few new videos on my YouTube channel about Circle and why I chose it, how I'm using it to build my community, Web Designer Pro. So check that out by going to my YouTube channel. And if you would like to check out Circle yourself, use my link if you would. Go to joshhall.co slash circle and you can get a 14-day free trial to try out Circle to see if it's a good fit for not only you, potentially for your web design customers, but even to build sites for your customers. Obviously, I'm a WordPress guy with websites, but I am a Circle guy with online communities through and through and even course builders. So it I would highly recommend consider using that for your customers. They have a bunch of different tiered options that will work for you. Um, but instead of trying to piece a bunch of tools together, you can use Circle for your customers if they want a membership site or a community or gated content or even courses. And you can embed Circle in a WordPress site. Did you know that? Well, you will once you see some of the YouTube videos coming out this week. All right, friends, here's Andy. We'll get a pulse on what the heck's going on and what's working for online memberships and communities. Andy, so good to see you again, man. Welcome back to the show, round two. I said before we hit record here, I'm in circle probably 90% of my time online now with my community and uh, yeah, it's just so cool to see like the landscape of memberships and communities change. And I wanted to have a conversation about this because you are somebody who's on the forefront of what's working well with any sort of online community or membership. So all that to say, thank you for your time and uh, welcome in, man. It is great to be back talking to you. I've had this carved out on my calendar, been looking forward to the day for uh, a couple of weeks now. So just uh, excited to see you. Yeah. I mean, gosh, it's weird to say, but it feels like we go back a ways now because it's you been <laughs> three and a half years since we initially connected when when Circle you know, came out onto the scene as far as a community, really a community tool at first, but now it's so much more, um, you know, right in the height of the pandemic. I'm kind of curious, even in the yeah. last, even in the last three years, Andy, actually, before we ask this question for, for folks who don't know you yet, what, what is your role in circle? Cause that might help lay the foundation of what, what you see from your end of things. 
Sure. So I'm one of uh, the three co-founders here at Circle. I have two partners. One of them is uh, Sid. One of them is Rudy. So Sid oversees. He's our CEO. He oversees. You know, he does CEO things, uh, but he oversees our product, engineering, all of that. But then Rudy is his really close partner on product and design. And then my role is I oversee our go-to-market or sales marketing, revenue operations, uh, data, thing, things like that. Gotcha. So I think everyone knows now, a few years after everything happened in 2020, we saw a big shift in online communities and people were excited and sometimes just forced to do more online and to start online friendships and online collaborations and partnerships. I think a lot of web designers were pretty ahead of the game when when the Zoom world happened because it was kind of funny, like a lot of clients had to do Zoom calls and web designers were all like, well, welcome to our world. We've been doing it for years now. Yeah. But the whole world essentially went online. And I, I think that opened up a whole new not necessarily a market, but a whole new shift on how memberships and communities are viewed and even courses and, and coaching programs. Where, where is it now compared to where things were in 2020? Kind of a broad question, but like, how has the landscape evolved since, you know, that, that big shift? Well, there was a big scramble in 2020 where if you were at a course platform, or let's say you use the course platform, or maybe you were using something like a Facebook group or Discord. Uh, it may not have been your main thing. It was something that you were kind of aware of. It was maybe a part of the experience that you were providing your members. Um, but all of a sudden, it kind of had to become the main thing. So all of those businesses without exaggeration, literally more than doubled in about, you know, two or three or four months because the whole world went online. And it was this kind of magical time because we didn't have the skills yet, most of us, uh, to actually like run a community. We didn't know even what it really meant. Uh, you know, we didn't know about like, how do I take my offline experience and bring it online? And now I think, you know, we were forced to learn, um, but a lot more people have those skill sets, or at least they know where to go to find and build those skill sets uh, when they're ready. And so, you know, before the folks who were doing this, this stuff back in 2020, 2019, 2018, it was, uh, they were really differentiated and it was kind of like this special sauce. Um, but this stuff has been around, memberships have been around for 10 years, you know, 20 years. Uh, now it's almost table stakes. It's kind of like the expectation for consumers, like people who are buying these membership experiences, courses, cohort based courses, they expect that there's going to be a community element to it because they know, you know, it's just so obvious once you've done it and experienced it, like what the value is that, that you get from it. You can't imagine going back in some cases. Yeah, I don't know if I can think of one course creator or platform that would just sell a DIY course that has no sort of support behind it or no, no sort of community. Whereas I think you're right before, you know, I got into courses in 2018. Before that, I had bought courses and it was just, you just buy it. You just buy the information. But it's very different now, isn't it? For anyone who's considering courses or even training for clients or workshops or whatever, it, it is very different now to where if you get into this end of, of things, it almost is like you, you have to have some sort of support behind it, whether it's ongoing or whether it's time, whether it's like a, a year access to community and support. And I definitely agree. It seems like that's just commonplace now. Totally. And one of the things that I think has been a big shift now, I'm curious though if you experienced this uh, in the early days, Josh. But you know, when you first go out, and you're like, "All right, I'm going to create a membership experience or an online course, or even I'm going to start maybe posting on social. I'm going to create a YouTube channel or whatever it is." Like, there are definitely people who are they're nervous to put their faces out there and to really be like connected to that other person on the other side of the screen, and you know, having just a static online course where I sell access to it. I don't really know who's actually buying it. 
um, it kind of protects you at least it like kind of not, not doesn't really protect you, but, uh, you're not as vulnerable. Your face isn't attached. You don't see if they actually get results from your course. The thing with the community, you know, this in, in your membership is like, you know, who these people are, you oh. know, whether they're actually getting results. Yeah. And you, you make a promise when somebody joins a membership that you have to deliver on and you're going to know if you deliver on the promise or, or not. And that's scary for people who don't know how to deliver on the promise. But if you know how to deliver on the promise, it kind of automatically puts you in the top like five or 10% in your market and helps you stand out. And so there's definitely this, this kind of effect where the rich get richer, like people flock to that quality, uh, and they'll, they'll take over a lot of the market share, you know, in any given little niche or, or area. You know, the results thing, it's so funny you bring that up because it's not talked about too much between course creators I know and, and membership communities and stuff, but that is a kind of a hidden pain point or like a hidden fear is like, what if I'm launching this thing and people are getting results? What I've realized is you have to almost take yourself personally out of the equation. Just like, you know, this audience are web designers building websites. It's the same thing with clients. It's like, you may have one client that utilizes the new website you built them and they're, they're driving traffic to it. They're promoting it. Their business is growing. You may have another client the same month, similar design, like really good website, but they're not doing anything with it. And they're wondering why the sales aren't coming in. The reality is you did your job both in both cases, the exact same way to, to your excellence, but it was kind of up to the client to go from there. That's how I viewed the results that my students get is I do all I can to empower everyone to the best of my abilities. And I'm happy to explain why I decided to go membership first more recently with Web Designer yeah. Pro. Um, and it was because of that. It was because the students that were getting the results had all the courses, had coaching with me, and they had a community behind them to support them and alongside them. And that's why I was like, at the end of the day, I could scale a DIY approach course business, but I just don't know what type of results people are getting unless they happen to send me a testimonial or if I do it at scale and at mass, try to get a bunch of testimonials. I don't know these people well. I don't know their business. And um, I never wanted to do like one-on-one -on -one coaching because that's a really tough business model in a lot of ways. But I love this kind of hybrid approach to where I'm doing things at a decent scale and then I'm able to see, I'm able to coach on a, on a hybrid level with a couple hundred people to see what's working well with a couple hundred people. That's plenty enough for me to see what's working well. And then that can affect a couple thousand people and eventually, you know, about tens of thousands of people. Totally. But all that to say, what works for one person will likely work for two. What works for two will work for five, what works for five, will work for 10. Uh, but there's going to be people where it's like, you can do all you can do. But if, you, if anyone to answer your question, Andy, is going to be a course creator, you almost have to remove like the almost the the personal uh, responsibility you feel for their results. Like at the end of the day, I can't go to somebody's house and drag them to a networking group and, you know, go get web design clients. That's up to them. I can share exactly how to do it. But, you yeah. know, I can't handhold them uh, or, you know, I can't take this handholding approach that you might get. Well, I don't know if you would get that anywhere, even with like an in-person coach, you still have to do your own thing. So I don't know if that answered your question. It's a great question, but that's kind of how I've approached that, you know, with the results thing. Yeah. And, you know, really what you're, you're kind of talking about in some ways is like, it's control. It's how much control do, do we have, um, you know, in, in your, in your membership experience, like you do have a lot of control because you can control the people who you let in and their kind of like level of uh, their level of commitment and, and how good of a match there is. You can control the information they're getting and the expectations that everybody sets. You can't do the work for them. Mm -hmm. um, it's really hard to do that though, you know, in different environments where it's like this static course experience uh where there's kind of like nameless faceless you don't know who the the end customer is uh but you know if i were um 
But I, I guess that's, you know, what's great about being a web designer is that you can have a lot of control in terms of the clients that you take on. We're working with a, a really great copywriter right now. His name is, is Josh. And what I love about Josh is Josh, uh, he, he doesn't like pander to us. He's very direct about what we need and doesn't hold, uh, he doesn't hold back. He, he'll tell us like, Oh, that's a bad idea. He'll be very clear about, you know, yeah, I'll take this project on from you guys, but here's exactly what I, I need from you. Uh, and then by the way, because he's done that, he's very much willing. It's not a, by the way, sorry. It's not a coincidence that his name is Josh. It's just just a great name. I would trust him for sure. Yeah. But then because he does all that work with us up front, he does then have more control and he takes on more accountability for our results at the end. It's actually a really good point, man. The more control you take as a service provider, the better chances that the results are going to be good. I mean, every web designer has the same story where you get, you make a beautiful website, you hand it off to the client and if they have access, you know, good luck in a month, the site looks completely different. And they're like, the website you build us, uh, isn't working for us. And like, well, you know, your marketing guy went in there and freaking changed everything and put like a paragraph, uh, you know, a small book on the homepage. So no wonder. Yeah, you're totally right. The more control you can, you can set like as the, as, or constraints and limitations you can set the better. And that is across the board, web design, service industry, courses, memberships, everything is, I feel like as much as you can make it a guided experience, the better, because you're going to have much more probable outcomes and results. And one thing I've noticed too is, is with pro one thing that's been really cool that I never had before over the past, really the past couple of years is people who are getting success in any level, even if they're just like making a little more than they made last year, that feeds into the other people who are in that zone. Like the, the, the old expression, the rising tide lifts all boats. I found that to be so true in Web Designer Pro because you see a member who's killing it and they're doing something. You're like, oh my gosh, I didn't even think about doing that and didn't pick it up from a course. You just see somebody else's results and they're sharing it. They're sharing wins. Like the wins category in, inside of my community, Web Designer Pro, side note, is like a gold mine of strategies yeah. that are working today in web design. All you have to do is go through that and then apply a few of those and I guarantee your numbers are going to go up. Like that's what's been really cool is, is the whole, like success tends to breed more success when you're around that. It's just like, you know, if you hang out with a bunch of friends who are going nowhere and you're going to end up going nowhere, but if you hang around five people who are just killing it, you're going to, you know, you're going to rise to that level. So I've certainly seen that as well when it comes to like the community aspect alongside and behind courses. And I actually kind of leads me to something I was kind of curious about from your perspective with this change in um, the landscape over the past few years in particular, do you feel like there's a burnout in community at all? Um, I mean, it may depend on the community, but I, or I guess are people at all just like, Oh my gosh, I can't, I can't do another community. I don't have time. There was such a mad rush into it in 2020 for yeah. those who aren't ready in the community. I'm wondering if now if there's a time where people are just getting more dedicated to their niches uh, and l- able to take on less. What's your pulse on that? Well, I, I think there's, I think there's probably more consumption of community experiences than there's ever been. Meaning that if you're creating community experiences, there's probably never been a better time, uh, and 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 so that's great. Like that's great for the industry. I think what is uh, can confusing sometimes to folks is the word, like the actual language community, it kind of, it's very overused right now and can really dilute things. Mm. And so, um, I think the, what's definitely not working and things to avoid is like saying, Hey, you know, I have this really great experience that's already working. I honed it in, but I feel like I have to make this like community component of it. So I'm just going to throw that on top without being really thoughtful of it. Um, or I'm just going to try and blast out an email to a list of a hundred thousand people say, Hey, come join my community and not have a thoughtful approach to it for 
bad community experiences, there's big burnout. Mm -hmm. For great community experiences, there's never been more appetite. Uh, and I think, you know, we can talk about what some of those like great community experiences are, but I'll, I'll give you a couple of examples. Um, your community experience is a great community experience. You have very high signal folks in there. You, you enable the members to deliver a lot of value to each other. If there is a single space around a wins, that's very tactical that I can literally go out and get one or two extra clients from. It pays for the entire thing. I learned this new skill that I could use for probably the next year, two, three years in my business, no brainer. And if that's kind of flowing all the time, amazing. Another example would be if there's a 30 day kind of like challenge community or something where I get one big outcome in 30 days and then I'm over. Like a community doesn't have to be always on. It can just be a community that spins up. We're, we're all on a little mission together for a period of time and it's over and I've accomplished that thing or I've acquired that skill, whatever it is. And like, there's never been more appetite for that. So I, I think there's, there's, there's a burnout for sure from people just kind of creating these like poor community experiences or throwing the word community at, at some of those experiences. Okay. First off, what a great reminder and a great um, challenge for me personally, for anyone who has any sort of community, even a list of clients where you want to like do a challenge together. Like if you have your web design clients and you want to help them, you know, boost revenue with email or email marketing or a lead generator, whatever it is, you could do, you could like take your list of clients and do a challenge together. doesn't mean they're going to be in community together forever. But I love that idea, Andy, that like 30 day approach kind of thing to where it's like, a, it's a sprint. It's like a cohort sprint. I don't know what it would be called. If it's not a community, yeah. I'm not sure what it'd be called, but that's a great idea. And it's something that's kind of low risk too. You could try it out and kind of see how it goes and see what relationships forge out of that. It's almost like a program, like a, or, or I know like a boot camp is a pretty popular thing, something like that. Uh, that's a great reminder. I needed to hear that, that not all communities are like every day forever. And I think that's probably where a lot of people are like, ah, do I want to, and you know, jump into something and suddenly I'm just going to be committed forever. I, my in-person networking group, for example, I, I like didn't go to one for almost a year because I was like, I don't want to commit to that. It ended up being yeah. the best thing for my business, but it took me a while to, to get to that point. So that's a great idea to have like more of a challenge, a sprint, a boot camp style approach, either before or alongside a community. If the word community is not resonating as well now, or if it's overused, do you, what would be a better term? Are there, are there some other terms that you've seen work from people who are using circle in particular? You know, I, I like the word community, actually. I doubled down on it. So I doubled down on it when talking about circle because mm -hmm. I truly believe that our product enables these very like high signal community experiences. So I love the word community and I will never stop using it. But it, when we talk kind of more practically about um, marketing, let's say a community experience that you're going to provide, you know, if you're to your point, if you're thinking, man, this is uh, do I really want to take this on of like starting a community experience or a membership or whatever it is that's always on. First of all, I wouldn't even recommend don't just don't, don't even start it. You can do a fixed version of it, but either way, what you'll often do is kind of identify what are those two or three or four signature offer or signature gatherings is, is the language we, we use a lot, which is kind of similar to like, there's this common phrase, a lot of marketing and sales people use signature, your, what's your signature offer or what's your signature course is something used a lot. Signature gathering is like, what is the, the main value prop you're going to get inside the community? We talk about this all the time, but it could be the hot seat concept. It could be we're going to do a book club. It could be, you know, something that I, I love the idea that you might do in your membership. It could be. We're all going to share our um, proposal and quoting process. And we're going to share one great like example of what that looked like. Um, 
and all of our learnings, do a big breakdown on it. And then I'm going to get feedback from other people. I'm just making this up, but I'm going to get feedback from other people about like how I could have done it better or whatever it is. We're actually about to launch one here next month for uh, newsletters for web designers. So everyone's going to share, we're going to do like a little bit of a challenge, probably like a 30 day type challenge in pro for, for email newsletters. So we're all going to get our first ones together. And I just opened up actually yesterday at the time of recording this, a new accountability section. That was actually just in for anyone who's running a community. One piece of advice I have is listen for like the the hot terms or the, the keywords, the hot topics that people are asking about. I had several members over the past few months ask about some sort of accountability with other members as well. And I was like, I should have like an official accountability space. So it's live yeah. now and pro. So yeah, perfect example. And so you'll, either way, like you'll have those kind of two or three, there's like the two or three really high value signature gatherings that you'll have. That'll be the meat of the offer. And then there's like other parts of the community. Maybe there's discussion areas where people are kind of ad hoc, you know, sharing ideas, getting feedback, all that. That's maybe not a signature gathering, but rather than going back to the original question, just talking about like, you know, join my community in practice, what you'll actually do is like, you just talk straight about the meat and potatoes, which is what are the signature gatherings? And it could just be mm. like, this doesn't sound very sexy, but it could just be like, we have join my web design accountability with some kind of fun, interesting meme or whatever, my accountability group, if that was like the only thing, and it could totally be the only thing. And you don't even have to use the word community. We all kind of know it's actually like a community is really what it is. So, uh, but it doesn't have to make it into the marketing. Gotcha. That's genius. Wow. I needed to hear that. As I think about growing pro and marketing it well, yeah, I'm just so tempted to say courses, community and coaching, but those are like the byproduct basically of, of the, the tactical things I'm offering. And that a lot of people are doing in any sort of community or membership. So that's really good. So lead with the, like the specifics. Um, I think yeah. so. It's a copywriting mistake that we make a lot at, in like internally. A lot of the copy that we make is like the headline is a little generic and it might be getting too in the weeds, but the headline is a little generic and the sub headline is like what, where the magic is. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times the feedback we have is like bring, so it might be, um, we're long, uh, you're going to get access to community dot community AI, right? Like our AI suite. And then it'll say like automatically craft engagement post, whatever, whatever. No, just make that the headline. You yeah. Know, let's lead with the magic. Let's lead with that. That's so, that's so funny. I do website reviews for my members. And uh, that's one of the most common things I do is I'll see a headline that's a little vague and kind of, man, not bad, but just kind of the, and then under that inevitably is like, that's where the gold is. That's where yeah. they really strike to the heart of like the results that they get for clients. I'm like, let's literally yesterday I did one for a member. Uh, and same thing. It was like the, the main headline was like, Hey, I'm your, I'm a web designer. And then the type of websites I build for clients, we get these type of results. I'm like oh, that, yes. that should be the first thing they yes. see for sure. Ah, oh, that's great. Our, um, all right, straight up, Andy, our DIY course is dead. What's that? What's that market like nowadays? I think there's there, there's definitely still a place for them. Okay. I, I think though, you know, what they're good for though, well, they're they're good for very um self, they're very like autonomous, self-driven people. But I, I think they're especially good at the low end in terms of um you know, courses that are, let's say sub a hundred dollars, sub a couple hundred dollars where they tackle a very specific area and, um, get you to a very clear outcome in a, a short amount of time. I think they're green for that. Uh, so no, I don't think they're, they're dead. Um, I, I don't think they're dead at all. I, I do think what's, what's really tough these days is selling the two or $3,000 course or the $4,000 program or whatever it is, that's purely uh, static self-serve. Yeah. Because you're competing against people that are delivering these more holistic kind of community first approaches that are going to get you a better outcome and you just get more uh, of your money. 
I totally agree. That's such a great way to sum that up. And of course I'm playing a bit of a devil's advocate with that question, but I have had people ask me that. And I wondered myself because a few years ago, $500,000, $2,000 courses, that was like the end product. It was like, I have the course, but now, especially with the way information is with AI and everything else, I feel like, I think you're totally right. I think if you can package up information just pure information in a low ticket offer, but then have that lead to the full experience that may include coaching, support, community. That seems to be where it's at. That actually really helps me as well as I'm rethinking, like how am I, because I have my courses still available as one-off options if you just want the course. And I look, I I recognize too, there's there's a time for that to where like, I don't have the time or the bandwidth right now to join a new community. But if I could go through a course and just get what I need to know with a little bit of coaching and then move from there, I'm, I'm very open to that. So uh, I think you're right. I think anyone who has a, a setup or a, or a knowledge base of information, I think you're totally right. What a great challenge to like package those things up into smaller low ticket offers. I'm really thinking about doing that for myself. So thank you, Andy. That gave me some clarity on how to maybe do that. I totally agree. I think there's also are- in between there's the um, right. Cause if, If on the one end of the spectrum, it's very premium, very kind of community led, hands on, high touch. We're all talking to each other all the time. There's that version. Then there's the, it's purely you buy it, you immediately get access to it and you're off to the races, but you'll never hear from me personally. There's obviously the in-between, which is something we do at Circle all the time with our customer community, which is we give them, you know, high production, self driven courses, but then we offer once a week, like live office hours. We do this with our boot camp as an example, like live office hours once a week where people can come and ask questions. Or, you know, maybe we'll do this self-serve course, but then you can come and get like the in-person version, uh, meaning like live on a call, we'll go through it and then you can ask questions at the end, you know, once a week, which then you're only, you know, making a commitment once a week and still one to many, you know? Yeah. And so um But then you also do get to meet the people that you're helping and and learning and, you know, that are learning from you. And so it's a kind of nice in between. It's really good for people who are just kind of starting out to to still get the FaceTime. Yeah. Gosh, that's a great point. Yeah. And there's, I found sometimes with a really good community, one of the best things to do, it's hard to sell communities. It really is. I mean, you can do all the video testimonials and, and, you know, sharing what's really going on and, and case studies and success stories. I can do all those things in the world, but I feel like until somebody is in it and they have some ownership of it, that's when it clicks. I can't tell you how many people who have joined pro and are like, Oh my gosh, I wish I would have done this sooner. I was, I've been on the fence for six months and I finally tried it out and yeah, I should have been here, you know, six months ago. It is a little bit tougher. I think I, I just say that to say, I think it's tougher to sell memberships and communities and maybe because that is the, the all encompassing nature that could be a community. I mean, it's a life changing thing. If it's, it's, it's good. If it's a really good thing, it's like, you know, like my best friends now are in in pro and and their best friends, people are working together. People are, have hired each other and are like, you know, like businesses are forming inside of web designer pro. It's amazing. And I think that's why sometimes it's hard to sell because it's not, it's not like one exact little thing. It's easier to sell like a pricing guide for web design. But the whole package is a lot harder to sell. So for anyone who is selling a community or a membership, I guess that's something to think about. Do you have any tips or maybe like a like a heads up, something to think about if somebody is considering starting a membership or a community of any sort? Uh, What are some of the like, you know, if you were to give like a 101, like if you're going to start a community, be prepared for this kind of thing. Do you have any things that come to mind? Yeah. So, you know. I'll tell you exactly how I would approach it if I was going to. So first of all, I I would choose something that I feel like I have a unique advantage in a unique advantage in terms of being able to really help people with the the content and the outcome. Like I really feel good about that. Uh, I would choose a topic where the outcome is valuable enough that people will be actually able to pay for it, where I'll be able to run a proper business, you know, and, uh, and earn a a good living from it. Um, so, and then also an advantage, like a distribution advantage where I would be able to go out and actually like acquire the members and grow it and feel, I I would know where my members are going to come from before I even do it. So, you know, for me, I'll give you one example. 
it would be pretty not easy, but I would have a huge advantage if it were to be a community around um, building, you know, software companies for, you know, so maybe it's like executives at software companies on the marketing and sales side or founders, right? And if I were to do that, I might charge, it could be, by the way, it could be five or $10,000 a year for that because, you know, you could really help people. So it'd be premium. I would then think, okay, what are my signature gatherings going to be? And by the way, if it was a gardening community, it'd be the same thing. <laughs> I would mm-hmm. charge, you know, $20 a month or $50 a month. Same thing with cooking. Uh, but I would find my signature gatherings. And so I would think, all right, what are the signature gatherings for that I really feel good about? Like I, it, it fits my personality and the type of work I want to do. Um, and then is this going to be an ongoing thing or is it going to be a start and end? Well, this I, I actually think could be an ongoing thing because businesses last a long time. Uh, whereas I'm only going to learn the guitar, you know, over eight weeks and then TBD, but or not probably not eight weeks. But, uh, so then I might say, okay, it's going to be an ongoing thing. What are my signature gatherings going to be? Well, I love hot seats and I, I feel bad for you because you've heard me talk about hot seats forever. It's just my favorite signature gathering of all the signature gatherings, um, where essentially you take, you know, somebody for 30 minutes or an hour, small group, six, seven people, peers that that person in the hot seat really respects. They share, uh, an important problem that they have in their business. That if, if it's solved, it would really help them. It'd be incredibly valuable to them. And we all sit there for maybe it's like two hours and we just try and solve that person's problem. Mm. And so that might be one of my signature gatherings. The other signature gathering might be some uh, thing where people can get feedback, right? So, you know, maybe it's like you share your kind of like big uh, new thing you rolled out. It could be like employee onboarding or it could be your operating plans or whatever it is. And then you get, some great service. Like we have like our five expert, you know, CFOs come in and they'll do like a review of it for an hour and then we'll share it with the broader community. We can all talk about it, turn it into content or whatever it is. But I would think what are those you know, three or four signature gatherings that I know if we deliver on these, man, that is a really valuable community. Then I would go, I'd create a really beautiful landing page. Easy for marketers to do really easy for designers to do, but the, uh, then I would create that page and I wouldn't promote it anywhere. I would literally just create a list of the 30 founding members, 50 founding members in a spreadsheet. I would reach out to them one-on-one pitch them on, Hey, I'm thinking about doing this thing. Do you want to, uh, do you want to like be involved in this at all? I'll give you a discount by the way. It's going to be really, it's going to be worth way more than what you're going to pay for it. I would probably already know them in some way or another. I would hop on a one-on-one call with every single one of them. And it would be a direct sales process uh, because there's nothing to show them yet. And I would be really honest with them upfront that this is a new thing. Like I, I wouldn't be like, I have this amazing community. You can join it. There's all this stuff happening in there. I would be very transparent. You're going to be one of the founding kind of members and, and we're going to do this together. Um, and, and you'll help me build it. And by the way, that's why you're going to get, you know, a big discount on this. That's sage, sage advice. And one thing you hit on there too, that's really important that I experienced with pro when I, when I launched, it was formerly called the web design club now web designer pro, but I learned early on, if I launch this, I can't just launch it by myself. Like it's not just a solo coaching operation. It is a community behind this stuff. So when I launched, I think I had 30, like like 35 or so people with the first wave. And that's the core group still today. A high percentage of those yeah. are the, the core group today. Like it is so important to have a good core group, even if it's five people that are going to help drive, if, if, it, if it is truly a community and it's not just a program that you start and finish. So I can't stress that enough. Like it's almost better to start small and grow and grow slow and steady that I've found than to have like a huge uptick and then, you know, potentially have a hundred people who don't know each other because suddenly <laughs> it's a lot of work to get everyone feeling comfortable with each other. Whereas if you kind of work in one, two, five people at a time, um, it's a lot easier as far as growing in the early days and ongoing. I'm, I'm reminding myself of that often too, because I'd love to see pro, you know, uh, I, my goal is to, to get to our 250 member cap. We're at 169 right now. 
And yeah, I would love to hit 250 already, but then I'm reminding myself, you know, I, at the expense of how th- well things are going right now, I don't want to grow too fast. And in any business, web design services, anyone who who knows you get a wave of sales, it's awesome, but then you got a whole slew of challenges. How do I finish yeah. these projects without working 120 hours a week and killing myself? Uh, same thing with communities. How like, you know, be careful what you wish for, I guess, with quick growth is, is the model, the motto, uh, motto of the story. You know, one of my favorite um, communities that exists, and it's, it's not really so much an online community uh, and it's not on circle, um, but it's, it's a guy named Jason Gaynard and he has a community. It's called mastermind talks. And, you know, it's, it's very curated. You basically have to be a seven figure entrepreneur uh, he literally like at this one kind of big event a year and he, he literally goes through everybody's background and he, he identifies like who's going to sit next to who and all that. He plans out every minute. It's like two or three days long. Um, he had a book, uh, back in the day about, uh, it's called mastermind dinners, but what his strategy was, and I don't know if it's still the same today. This is, you know, many years ago, but they, he capped the number of people in it and, but he did increase the price pretty much every year as they would add more value. And instead of increasing the number of people in the community, he focused on increasing the quality of people in the community. And that allowed him to still be able to like always improve the experience yeah. while also growing the business and making the experience better for all the other members as their peers were consistently uh, yeah. getting, getting better. Yeah. And, you know, and there's a, there's, that's a big, that's a whole nother topic. The idea of a cap. Um, the reason I'll just share publicly, like the reason that I instituted this cap is because I personally coach everyone in pro. Like we, everyone has access to me. I'll look at your proposals or pricing or wow. your website. I cannot do that for more <laughs> than 250 people. Uh, yeah. And that's only because not everyone is, you know, I don't have 200 people a day right now DMing me in pro. It's a smaller percentage, but what happens often is somebody who is new is going to need a little more coaching initially and then they're off. Like I give them the to do's and then they're off for a couple months doing their thing. So it kind of spaces out and, and works out nicely. That's why I have that cap with the current level of pro. Once we hit that cap, I'm I'm going to open up probably like a an entry tier or a basic tier that would give them access to courses and and some of the community and probably a monthly call, but you'll just not have the direct coaching access to me and some of the other the other stuff. I'm also very very leery of of messing up the the amazing community that we have, like the tight knit feel. But at the same time, and tell me this, what you've seen on this, it is very hard to have a tight knit community that is bonding well and gelling well and supporting each other. And they're welcoming new people. But at the same time, if you welcome too many or there's the potential of a bad apple, um, that can really mess things up. And thank goodness I better knock on some wood. I have, you know, how many, guess how many comments I've had to delete in pro Andy since I started in 2020? Like how many bad comments that yeah. I that were flagged I had to delete? Two. Zero. Amazing. Zero. Unheard of. We had one that was like, ah, I could have been said nicer, but it wasn't to the point where I was like, yeah, no. Uh, and, and the price point helps with that. And, it, and it's always been built as, you know, some it's, it's very, very clear. You need to be like-minded in this way to join. Uh, and that's without an applica- application. I say all that to say, if you do get some fire in a community or, or a pool of clients and things are going well, even if it's a small group, it's a tricky balance protecting that, but also growing that. Uh, do you have any well, tips on that? Like when you have something that's going really well, but you want it to grow, how do you, how do you protect it, but also make it a welcoming environment too? So I'll start with the philosophy and then I'll get down to the tactics, but like philosophically, the way I, I think of these communities, and by the way, just for everybody's context, my company circle, we have a customer community with, I mean, we have 10,000 customers, but I think there's something like 16,000 people in there or something right now. And it's generally, you know, very well behaved. Um, but we kind of, uh, treat it like our living room a little bit. And we stole that, uh, from, from Tim Ferriss, who, uh, I think it was like 10 years ago, you know, he used to have, I mean, his blog was so popular. He'd get all these comments and 
Some of them would be great. Others would be a little not so great. And he was like, nope, I feel no guilt around deleting comments. Now, we don't really delete comments unless something is really off in the Circle customer community, just kind of out of principle. Like we try and just be very transparent. But if somebody is like doing damage to somebody else or they're just like really ruining the vibe for a lot of other members, they're, like, they're rude or whatever, we'll just, we'll just send them a note being like, hey, can you delete that, that message? Um, but you know what? We have 16,000 members and it's so incredibly rare. I think at our scale, just for context, you know, Matilde and Pedro, they run our community day in, day out. And they, uh, I, I would guess they delete a comment once every, probably two to three a month. And then, but mostly those two to three are just, it's like, uh, it's posted in the wrong area or something like that, mm -hmm. or, you know, whatever it is. So it's not a real problem if you nail the fit and the expectations up front during, and you do that the entire process from the initial outreach to them, explaining what it is, you know, in your marketing to the landing page itself, to the application form, to maybe that intro call, if you have one with the first members before they join, where you can figure out if it's a mutual fit to the onboarding expectations when they come in that first welcome video they have to the new member, like sign up checklist and all those places, you're kind of reinforcing and weeding out the bad behavior mm -hmm. until that first time they're really getting in there to, to share ideas and start to participate. Like they, they know what the expectations are and uh, they're actually probably in the community because of those expectations. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. Especially in, in the field of web design, there's so many Facebook groups that are still hopping for web designers and a lot of great Facebook groups, a lot of great forums, but when a group gets to a, th a 5,000, 10,000 member mark, I've, I founded a group that's now 25,000, my Divi group that I founded years ago, you are going to get some rough comments. And I've had a lot of members of Pro say how, uh, how they appreciate having a safe space to be able to like ask questions and know they're not going to get bombarded with like hire me kind of things or like, oh, you're an idiot. What do you think? Like that kind of that kind of stuff. I think that is the value of a premium community for sure. Is it's like, I, I don't know the best analogy, but I guess it is. It's almost like instead of like a lounge where anyone can kind of go into, it's like it, you're, you're a level back. You're like, you're, you're like, what, what's the living room thing? Like you're in, you're in the room kind of thing. Um, there's more social state. Like there's more, there's more at stake, right? Like, first of all, 20,000 people, just think about it. It's half of a stadium. That's all of Madison square garden. Like, if you were to look around Madison Square Garden, there's some people having a really crappy day in there. And that's going to come out, you know, in their interactions that day. And if they spend a good amount of time in your community, it's going to come out in your, your community. It's just part of it, right? And then honestly, there's nothing I've seen, you know, you just need moderation tools for, for yeah. that. Uh, but when it's a hundred people and I have built up a relationship with, the hundred people or the 300 people or whatever it is in there, there's a lot more cost to me just doing whatever comes natural, you know, to the, to the downside, you know, out in a, in a post. So, uh, I think, I just don't think you get it very much. With yeah. No, yeah, good point. Uh, I'm curious, kind of curious as we get ready to, to close this one out here, Andy, have you seen, communities in circle that are based around service providers, like the or the, or the, the customers of service providers. One idea we've been exploring in web design and, and pro and, and a lot of the people I'm working with, even Eric, the CEO of my agency, he has, he started like a customer community. You have a really good example of that with circle. Now a SaaS product is different than a service product because my web design clients may never interact with each other, but have you seen customer communities for service-based people like web designers, or do you think, do you think there's a market for that? Yeah, I, I think there's a market for it where I think there's a market for it where the customers themselves, the customers of the service providers are similar customer ICPs. Meaning I'll, I'll use like web design as, a, as an example. Uh, I know there are web design agencies that focus on very specific verticals, meaning um, there are some that focus, literally there are some that focus on car dealerships. There are some that focus on 
uh, law offices and, and legal. And if that's like my thing, uh, you could potentially connect those people together. I don't know if I would do it in that case. Um, or if it was around like, or let's say, let's use law. I don't know if this is the best example, but it could be very specific. Like it could be, if they came to you for, let's say web design, or maybe more broadly, like marketing services, maybe you're like a broader, like marketing agency for law offices, you might create a small, com- and let's say you have 30 clients or 50 clients, you know, over the course of a couple of years, you could potentially create a small group that has maybe like the marketing manager, marketing leaders, like Mm -hmm. at those law offices, let's say they're, you know, 20 people plus or 10 people plus as part of that community. Like that would make sense. What wouldn't make so much sense is if maybe you're a um, marketing agency and you serve kind of like these different, all these different verticals, maybe all you do is paid acquisition. And then you serve all these different verticals. Ah, you could create a community there potentially. It could be yeah. all around paid acquisition. There, there, there is something there. I think it's just a, a very um, different approach. And you have to really put yourself in the customer, the member's shoes and be like, what, what are they going to get from this? You know? Yeah. I, I think, and I've seen this already play out over the past year or so with, with, a couple of members in pro who have experienced and tried this out with who have like tighter community or tighter customer set. And then Eric with, with my in transit studios, my, my agency right now, there is definitely a couple different avenues for this in the way of basically essentially having like a membership behind your, your web design services. What yeah. I would recommend if I were doing it, what I would do is just have a customer pool and offer to go like live once a month for a Q and a. Yeah, maybe topical. Like we might talk about the changes that's going to happen here soon with Google AI, and just let everyone know here's what's going to happen with SEO. Here's what it's looking like. Any questions? Even if there's a mechanic and a chiropractor and a hair salon and an entrepreneur, like they have nothing in common, but they all have websites and they all want to get better SEO rankings. That's kind of how I would go about that. And what I would do is, if it's like a ninety-seven dollar a month thing or, or even less but they have access to that and some premium resources that you could continue to provide. What I would do is, is like, if you do a $5,000 website job, then they would get like 12 months access to this, which would be like a free call every month. I would do something like that today. Uh, It would be a win, win total. And then after 12 months, if somebody's loving it and they're like, I want to keep, keep on having Josh for these monthly calls. Awesome. 97 bucks a month, baby, let's go. You do that for 50 clients. What's the math on that? Hold on. Hold on. We're going to do live math. 5, bucks. Yep. What was that? 5,000 bucks a month. Yeah. 5,000, almost 5,000 bucks a month. MRR, monthly recurring income on the backside of your business. So I think that's where things are moving as far as the service-based industry. Because a lot of people in my audience are not going to want to do like their full-blown own community. Some are eventually too. Um, but right now, I think there's a lot of options for for like a a smaller type, even if you don't call it a community, but like a customer pool, a customer support center, whatever you want to call it. There's a lot of options for that. And I recommend using Circle, you know, obviously full blown 100%. So I hope everything we've covered really lays the groundwork because in this support community that you could offer your clients, you could 100% take everything we've talked about, Andy, with how to structure your offer, really highlight the, the, the benefits, the results that people are going to get not just say like, join my community because most clients are going to be like, I don't have time for that. But if you say, join my live coaching calls, well, every month we have a topic, it's going to help you out. They're like, ooh, that I'm interested in. Um, or train their team, whatever it is. There's a lot of different aspects that could work with this. And then you could I, build, I love that concept. You can I, build I, a customer community. The wheels are spinning uh, right now. But man, that's such a great, it's such a great uh, idea. I could even see the agencies that, I could see if you have 30, 50 agencies, even bring in some of those agency people, uh, sorry, 30 to 50 customers. I could even see bring in some of those customers to do some of the teaching, you know, each month on the live Q and A's and all of that oh. outside experts. Like, yeah. I mean, really this idea is basically like what I did in my networking group in person. It's just online. Like we all have different businesses, but every month or every week, 
some member would have a chance to promote and talk about like their area of expertise. So like one month I talked about SEO and everyone's like, Oh my gosh, yes, yeah, sign me up. I got a ton of clients that way in the group. And they were like, Oh yeah, I'm working with somebody who is trying to figure out how to show up on Google. So I'll refer them to you. Same principles apply here. All that to say, I feel like this is a very untapped market and opportunity to have essentially a customer support community. That's like, little bit of coaching, a little bit of community and people who resonate with each other and have similar services as customer types may partner up with each other. I mean, I, totally. I learned the power of being a connector in my networking group and you can 100% do that here. So yeah, I'm really excited about that, man. I mean, let's end off on this note, Andy, like what are you most excited about in the way of communities and online memberships now uh, compared to, you know, four years ago when Circle started? I think the what what really gets me most kind of like jazzed in the morning when I get up and and, and look at the progress in this space is seeing the, how Web Designer Pro is doing. I, yes, <laughs> yeah. It, it's the connection that people, the admins, like the people who are creating the communities that they're mm -hmm. having with the members and between the members and, and them getting to experience those connections between the members. Cause I don't think it gets much more fulfilling than that. It's very tangible. You see the results that you're providing and that your members are providing to each other. And you didn't get that as much four or five years ago when only 10% of those experiences out there were community and the rest were kind of static experiences. And so mm -hmm. that's the biggest thing I see it every day so many times and so i just know how real it is and i kind of see the momentum uh happening the snowball kind of like picking up steam and so that's what i'm most excited about oh that's so cool man yeah i feel like the human element of all this is what it's really about uh just yeah we're better together and you get better cool. results when when we do things together so yeah, that's really cool, man. Well, Andy, thank you for your insight on this one, man. There were some really cool things that I took away from this personally as a community builder and a membership guy myself and a course creator. But like I said, I, I like that you're excited about that idea too of, of the, the the support, the customer support community. I mean, you Circle is, I don't know if anyone has done a better job than Circle. Like I love going into that community. I shared a win recently because I felt comfortable doing so. And I knew that people were going to be excited to, to see what's worked for me and I'm going to learn from some other people. So I think there's a, a huge opportunity for that, especially for web designers with customers who maybe did different industries, but by golly, the goals are the same with having a better online presence. So yeah, I love it, man. Of course, I'm a huge fan of Circle. It goes without saying, I 100% endorse, use and recommend Circle for customer support, communities, coaching, courses, all the things. I mean, I'm a WordPress guy, but I would use Circle for all the things I just mentioned. And then you can embed it in your WordPress site too, which is so awesome. So joshhall.co slash Circle is my link to get a free trial for anyone who's curious. Uh, Andy, thank you for your time, man. I really appreciate your insight as always. And uh, are you looking forward to a round three here at some point? I, I can't wait and just want to thank you. And uh, you're, you're truly like the best example of somebody who creates a community for the right reason. And then like predictably over and over delivers value for your, your members. It's like the, the model. Uh, so I just love, uh, you know, getting exposed to kind of what you're doing and learning from you and, and for all the generosity in our circle customer community where you share share what's working. Uh, so really appreciate it. Can't wait for uh, round three. Oh, happy to man. And look, if you want me to come in and do another training in circle, count me in. I love sharing yeah. what's working and yeah, I'm happy to happy to yeah. share what, what I've learned and what's working, man. Love it. All right, Andy. Well, cheers. Thanks, dude. Thanks. There you have it, friends. If there's anyone who knows what's working right now, it's Andy with circle.so. Again, so glad to have uh, be able to spend some time with him in this one to pick his brain. I hope this has helped you get a good feel for how you could include creating an, not only an online community or membership for you and your business, because I, I really think there's a huge opportunity. In fact, I know there's a huge opportunity because Eric, the CEO of my agency is doing this and I have some members of Web Designer Pro who have a subscription style community. It's like a customer community 
for their customers to empower them and to add more value to them moving forward. And you can use Circle to do that. It's what I would recommend doing for sure. I absolutely love Circle. I was very hesitant to move forward with an all-in-one solution, but I can say since signing up for Circle in the fall of 2020, it is one of the best decisions I've ever made in my business. And I have never looked back. And I know the same will be true for you too if you decide to check out Circle for online communities, course sites, or memberships. Use my link if you would, joshhall.co slash circle to try a 14-day free trial of Circle. And as I mentioned in the intro, this week at the time of releasing this episode, I'm going to be uh, putting out a few new episodes or a few new uh, videos on my YouTube channel all about Circle. So if you've he heard me talk about it, now you'll get a really good feel of what it looks like and get a peek behind the curtain here as I'm giving a behind the scenes look at my community web designer pro and how I've used circle to help me build that. So check that out. And you can go to the show notes for this episode with all the links we mentioned at joshhall.co slash three one four for this episode. All right, friends, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you on the next episode of the web design business podcast.